The following table shows the unit shipping cost between cities, the supply in each source city, and the demand at each destination city. Define your variable and write a linear program to model this problem. Now, when these types of questions are given, you should always figure out the uh, balance between the supply and the demand. So if you look at the supply, uh, the supply here is 150, 100, 200, so they add up to 450. Whereas uh, this one is 190, 145 plus 45 is 190. Adding 160 gives you 350. Adding 150 gives you the demand total as 500. So that means there is a uh, 50 units of difference between the supply and demand. If the supply is bigger than demand, or supply equals to demand, uh, nothing needs to be done. Okay, no problem. However, if the supply is less than demand, then you need to have a dummy factory, dummy uh, origin, uh, so that all the demand could be met. Okay, so we're going to write a dummy. For the dummy, you put zero for all the costs because you don't want to mess up the final cost. If you put some, some other number here, then that's going to increase the final cost, and that's not what we want. And the supply that the dummy would provide will be this fake 50 supply. So whoever receives this uh, from, from this dummy, uh, they're not really getting anything. Okay. To write down the linear program, you need to put numberings on that. That's the most convenient way. Uh, you could do it in a different way, but I found it to be the most convenient to put numberings on there. So I'm going to put 0, 1, 2, 3, 0 for the dummy. Uh, usually, uh, if I don't have the dummy, I start with 1, 2, 3. And then 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Now, it says to define your variable, so I'm going to define xij as <coughs> the number of units shipped from i to j. Okay, so uh, from the source i to destination j, the number of units that are shipped is defined as xij. And uh, for each of the origin, I have to say the number of units shipped out of that origin cannot be more than what it can supply. So these will be all inequalities. So you have to remember that any kind of origin, you need inequalities. Uh, let me write them down quickly. X04 uh, is between dummy and uh, terahote. And then uh, X0 5 will be dummy to Indianapolis, 0, 5, plus x of 0, 6 will be dummy to Fort Wayne, uh, x, 0, 7 will be South Bend, and that has to be less or equal to 50. That's for the dummy. Okay. Now I'm just going to copy this so I can write these quickly. Um, And then I'll just change the subscripts. Um, now for the St. Louis, it's all 1 to 4, 1 to 5, 1 to 6, 1 to 7. So all these subscripts has to be changed to 1. And then... Uh, says St. Louis can at most give 150 supply. You put that. The next one is Evansville. Starts with 2, 2 to 4, 2 to 5, 2 to 6, 2 to 7, and it's up to, it can supply up to 100. Then it's Bloomington, Bloomington to Terra Haute. Uh, it, Bloomington to Indianapolis. Okay. 
keep going and then until on the right side you, you can you can supply at most 200 it says 200 here okay so those are the inequalities for the origin now for the destination well the destination was requires uh, all the incoming units uh, everything that's shipped to to that destination to equal to its demand you don't want to have less than the demand or more than the demand it has to be equal to demand okay uh, so uh, from dummy to terra hote will be zero four and then one to four so this is for terra hote so terra hote should receive from four places four origins and it has to add up to 150 so it has to add up to 150 and it receives from uh, zero and then one two to four and then three to four they have to add up to 150. you write similar equations for the other three other destinations okay and the next one will be to destination going to five Indianapolis and it has to add up to 160 this time as you can see uh, the demand for Indianapolis is 160 six 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 and then for that one fort wing 145 then seven that has to be just 45. okay um you also need to add that xij is non-negative somewhere. I usually put them right after I define the variables. xij should be non-negative. And then there should be the objective function. Objective function is uh, the cost of the entire uh, supply. So uh, when you write down the objective function, it's important to write down all the dummy variables with zero as a coefficient. Although it doesn't really do anything, uh, it makes sure that people who read your work see that these are dummy variables. Seeing the zero in front of the variables will let the person reading it uh, know that it's a, it, these are dummy variables. Okay, so let's uh, copy one of them here. Uh, let's copy this one. So x04, x05, x06, x07, these are all dummy variables. They have 0 as their coefficient. And then plus, we have these. And these have the coefficient 8, 6, 12, 9. So I'm going to put those. 8, 6, 12, 9, okay, then next one, Let's plus, the next line is 5, 5, 10, 8, put that there, 5, 5, 10, 8, And the last one, these, and three, two, nine, ten. Three, two, nine, ten. Okay, let's just see why this this should be the objective function. For example, uh, if you ship something from Bloomington to Indianapolis, 
that's 3 to 5, it should have a coefficient of 2. 3 to 5, x3, 5 should have a coefficient of 2. So it, this does, this subjective function does represent uh, this, this table. Now I forgot to say that uh, the goal, your goal is to minimize this. So let's write down minimize. So objective function minimizes this. Uh, the objective is to minimize this function here. Okay, use Excel solver analysis to write out your transportation plan with names, quantity, and costs, and the optimal transportation cost of this plan. Address any lack of balance between supply and demand. All right, so uh, we put everything into Excel, and Excel gave us us this solution. Our goal is to write down this as a distribution plan, the transportation plan, and we can say that St. Louis doesn't deliver to Terre Haute but to Indianapolis. So let's write that. Uh, how many? Uh, 105 units to Indianapolis at, uh, if you go back and read, it's uh, $6 per unit. So that would give you a total of $630. So that's the cost. Continuing on, we have uh, St. Louis delivers 45 units to South Bend at $9 per unit. And if you multiply 9 times 45, that gives you $405. Okay, let's look at Evansville. Evansville delivers to Terre Haute only five units, right? At, uh, if you go back and look at the table, let's see. If you look at the ta table, Evansville to Terre Haute is $5 per unit, right? So that's what you write. You write down five dollars unit and that gives you twenty five dollars because five times five is twenty five the next one Evansville delivers is Fort Wayne 95 units right, you see here Fort Wayne 95 units to Fort Wayne at, and you have to go back to and look at the table, Evansville to Fort Wayne is 10. So you write down $10 per unit. And 10 times 95 is 950. Bloomington delivers 145 units to Terre Haute. At um, it's three dollars per unit. And that's uh, 435. If you multiply the two, you get 435. Then you have uh, 55 units to Indianapolis at $2 per unit, which is $110. Now, if you add up 630, 405, 25, 950, 435, 110, if you add everything, then you can get the total optimal transportation cost 
as uh, 250 2555 dollars now it also said address any lack of balance between supply and demand and remember that uh, there was a 50 dummy variable right uh, and if you look at here, you see that slack 50 is here, which means that Fort Wayne will not receive the 145 it requested. See, in, originally, if you look at Fort Wayne, it's asking for 145. But if you look here, uh, the cell value is only 95, meaning that uh, instead of receiving 145 requested, it will only get 95. So you should write that too. Fort Wayne received uh, 50 units less than its 